Hi everyone, welcome to or welcome back to my channel. I'm Laura and today we're going to be talking about how to get your very first internship or job. This may also apply for getting your very first new grad job. I know that experience begets experience when we're talking about jobs and it can feel a little bit paradoxical to view all these job applications that require prior experience when you're really just a student looking for your very first internship. Chances are you clicked on this video because you're looking for a little bit of help in your job search. Whether you're in the process of applying to jobs, whether you haven't even thought about applying to jobs. I hope that I can help provide you with some clues on how to best prepare yourself for the internship search and also some tips that I've picked up along the way through my internship application process. We all know internships are probably good, especially if you click on this video, but I also do want to take a quick moment to highlight why internships are great. Are these internships when you're working in real time with full-time software engineers, product managers, and managers? You learn completely different skills than you do in school and they can also convert that internship into another internship or even a full-time role if you're lucky. In general, internships are great experiences and I would highly recommend that you pursue them if you know that it is something you have an interest in. Let's create a plan to help you get your first internship or full-time job. So the first point that I want to belabor is you need to start planning and ASAP. Regardless of what time you're actually watching this video, whether it be in the spring when recruiting is already over or in the fall when you're trying to plan for the next year's recruiting season, planning is going to be really important in setting yourself up for success. There are a couple questions that I would recommend you ask yourself in planning. The first major question here is do you know what type of internship you actually want to apply for? So there are tons of different options. Software engineering can be split up into front-end and back-end roles or general software engineering roles. There's product management, program management, etc. Data science, machine learning, AI. You get the gist of it. The second main question is when are you planning to start? When do you want to intern? When do you want to start your full-time job? Is this in the summer, fall, winter, or spring? There are slightly different timelines for each of these applications, so this will also be another important factor for you to keep in mind. For example, if you're starting it traditionally in the summer for an internship or full-time job, and the natural recruiting season starting late summer and rolling into fall, will be the perfect timeline for you. Here are also some other points I want to throw out just to get the conversation rolling and have some ideas for you in mind. So one is that this isn't just limited to being a college student. If you're a high school student, I highly recommend looking at high school internships. There are plenty of small or mid-sized companies that do offer high school internships, so just take a look around. I've also discovered the benefit of having a part-time internship, so working 10 to 20 hours a week during school and also finding that easy to manage with my schoolwork. Lastly, before I move on, I do want to say it's important to not limit yourself, especially if you are looking for your first internship. Limiting yourself to just pursuing a data science internship can feel very stressful, especially because data science is a smaller field compared to the vast world of software engineering. The same can be said for product management, all of these other niches that fall under the giant umbrella of computer science. The second major point that I want to talk about here is for all my underclassmen. If you are a first and second year student, there are plenty of specific internships just for you as underclassmen that also help to filter out the competition. Having completed one of these myself, I can say that these are great opportunities for first and second year students, and they are also generally more understanding about a lack of relevant experience in the CS field. They're really just looking for bright, interested students in computer science, not that you already have an internship or two under your belt. These first and second year internships also bring a lot of benefits. For example, the program that I interned at this previous summer, the Microsoft Explorer program, was a really great experience for me and I'll do a longer video detailing my experience as a Microsoft Explorer intern, so keep an eye out for that too if you're interested in learning more. At a high level though, Microsoft's Explorer program allows you to explore both traditional software engineering roles and also a role in product management, which is actually what I'll be doing, so I'm super thankful for the Explore program to have introduced me to that path. These first and second year programs will also aim to convert you into a full-time intern the following summer as well, and also have a less competitive interviewing environment. Okay, so by now hopefully you have a little bit of knowledge of what you want to do, what you want to apply for, and roughly when you're going to apply. Let's move on to some more actionable steps to help you in the internship search process. I want to dedicate a little bit of time to talking about setting up a practice plan for technical interviews. As you can probably guess, in some nature, your interviews will involve a technical programming question. Speaking of personal experience, if you start practicing while you're already applying, it can feel like a huge time crunch and, and in the end you might even get burnt out from practicing and not retain as much information. Having a plan in place helps keep you efficient and you can also refer back to these previous study materials that you've gathered up over the past couple of weeks or months to make you feel more confident leading up to any interviews that you have. As I mentioned in our previous video, the resume is the gateway to your soul. It's basically your entire life story, your emotions, what makes you you, why you're motivated, all minimized onto one page and 11 point font, some bullet points, and some subtitles. If you have a great resume that manages to catch the recruiter's eye, then you're basically in. You'll have high response rates, you can charm your interviewers with your amazing technical skills, and also show them how great of a community communicator and hard worker you are. 
I've made a separate video on how you can optimize your resume. I'll put it up in the cards if you want to go check it out or maybe over here. But the most important tip that I'll bring from that video is please ask everyone you know to look over your resume and provide constructive criticism. I guarantee you that having a second pair of eyes to look at your resume will help you catch any errors that you might not have noticed and generally just help your writing be more error free and clear. Now the most important part is to just start applying. After a couple applications you soon find out that rejection really isn't all that bad. The worst case is that you get rejected and as I like to think of it. As someone who's applied for internships and jobs for the past two years, I've gotten really good at handling rejection and getting ghosted. Also, this might be helpful with dealing with your love life. I don't know. Application methods here vary on the person. Some people like to send out mass applications, some people like to tactically send out applications. Both have their pros and cons. Personally, I was someone who sent out as many applications as possible and it ended up working out for me, but I also do know people who have selectively applied and also had good rates there. It really just depends on where you think your strengths are and also how confident you are in your own skills. I would recommend erring on the side of less confident, especially if this is your first internship, but who am I to stop you? If you can get a referral anywhere, that'll significantly boost your chances because it increases the chances that someone will actually look at your application and decide if you're a good fit or not for their company. Cold applying though can often be tedious and is often a numbers game for a lot of people. That's not to say that there aren't a lot of resources out there though to get your foot in the door without needing a referral. Some people like to cold email recruiters and other people at the company just to get their foot in the door, but I know there are tons of guides out there on LinkedIn and Reddit, for example, so take those with a grain of salt, and if you do find good results, then congrats. So theoretically, in our timeline, hopefully you've applied to a couple companies, and maybe you start hearing back from our two companies. Awesome! Start scheduling those interviews as soon as possible. As soon as you start hearing back, complete any initial assessments and schedule future interviews as soon as possible. You want to get the momentum on all these applications, and honestly, the more you delay it, the more stress and anxiety you'll get. The earlier you can get something scheduled, the higher likelihood that there are more available spots for you, in their intern program. If you want a little bit more specific advice, I'd recommend you look at the interview tips video, which I'll also link in the cards, but the interview process will vary for every company. If you are really interested in what these company interview processes are like, I would refer you to Reddit to learn about some other previous interns or previous interviewees' experiences, or also on Glassdoor where they post anonymous reviews. So last, lastly, this isn't really a tip so much as it is just a motivational speech, but I really want to impart on you to keep your chin up. Rejection is a natural part of life, especially applying to jobs. If you think about it realistically, you cannot be the best candidate for every single job out there. Internships and new grad roles always have tons of eager students applying, and many companies, even the smaller ones, get over 300 to 500 applicants for each internship posting. That can be a lot for recruiters to look through, and so they may get delayed in actually responding back to candidates, and you also may just end up getting ghosted because they just simply skipped over your resume on accident. Sometimes it can also just be a bad day for the recruiter, and other times you may have better luck and you get a recruiter that really loves you, your application, and really wants you on the team. I definitely want to say though that eventually with a mix of time, luck, and hard work, I promise you that you get your first internship or full-time job and crush it. If you have any more questions about applying for your first internship or full-time role, please drop them in the comments below and I'll do my best to answer them. Also, if you have any advice for students who may be struggling to find their first internship, please feel free to leave that information in the comments below. If you like this video, please subscribe to this channel and like the video to show your support. Thank you so much for watching and I'll see you all next time. Bye!